Hey guys, I'm a couple days late. This is the video I would want to do on Pi Day. Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. Did you know that Pi is exactly equal to this fraction? It's called a continuous fraction, and if you continue this pattern forever, it will give you exactly Pi. And here's a longer version of it. And if you cut it in any one of these places, you'll get an approximation for Pi. And the further down you go, the more accurate your approximation. There's a cool way you can visualize this. If we show a graph and this is pi right here, you can see how it approaches pi. The first level would be 4 over 1, which gives us 4. And if you go one level further, it gives us about 2.667. And if you go another level, it'll give us about 3.467. So it looks like it's alternating. It's going above, below, above. The next level gives us this here, 2.895. And the next level is there and then here, and then here, and here, and here, and here, and they're slowly getting closer and closer to pi. And the farthest I calculated was this one right here, the 3.194. And as we keep going forever with this, we're gonna keep getting closer and closer to pi. And then if you could do it forever, it would be exactly pi. This is a pretty cool visualization, isn't it? Seeing it hone in on pi. The other thing I wanna show you is how do you derive this fraction? So first we're gonna start with the Taylor series of arc tan of x. To understand where this comes from, it'll take about a year of calculus. I'm not gonna do all that in this video, but it could be a fun video in the future, maybe July 22nd. But for this video, we're gonna start here. So let's start by finding the first couple of terms. We'll plug in n equals zero or n equals one or n equals two. We copy this down three times and in the place of these ends, we'll plug in zero. In the place of these ends, we'll plug in one and the place of these ends will plug in two. All of this will simplify into one over one x. All of this will simplify into negative one third x cubed. And all of this will simplify into positive one fifth x to the fifth. Let's move all of these over to here. And this pattern is gonna continue. It'll be minus x to the seventh over seven, plus x to the ninth over nine, minus x to the 11th over 11, and so on. For this video to save space, I'm gonna focus on these four terms, and then we just know the rest of this is still here. For the next step, let's plug in one for x. So it'll be arc tangent of one, and that's gonna equal one minus one cubed over three, plus one to the fifth over five, minus one to the seventh over seven, and so on. Each of these on top will just be one, and we can smush everything together. Now let's evaluate this arc tangent of one. Arc tangent of one is equal to some angle theta. It's the angle such that tangent of theta is equal to one. Tangent is equal to the ratio of opposite over adjacent. Since it's equal to one, that means the opposite or adjacent have to be equal to each other. And that occurs if the angle is equal to 45 degrees. We want to express this in radians, so we're going to draw a circle around our triangle. And let's extend this out here and clean this up. For the entire circle, it's equal to two pi radians. That's the number of radii that would go around to make the entire circumference. This red portion connected to our 45 degree angle, it is one eighth of the entire circle, or in other words, pi over four radians. This pi over four is our theta in radians. And this is the value of our arc tan of one. So we can change this into pi over four. Now from here, if we multiply both sides by four, that gives us a really neat sum for pi. Pi is equal to four minus four thirds plus four fifths minus four sevenths plus four ninths minus four elevenths and so on. If you were to add up all these forever, it would equal exactly pi. This sum is already really cool, but I wanna see how this changes into that continuous fraction from before. Let's bring it back to here. And then from here, let's subtract one from both sides. On the left-hand side, we have pi over four minus one. And on the right-hand side, these ones cancel each other out. So we end up with the sum starting at negative one third. And then from here, let's have the leading term be positive. So let's divide both sides by negative one. On the left-hand side, we have a positive term and a negative term. It's gonna to switch to a negative term and a positive term. And on the right-hand side, all these negatives will become positive and all the positives will become negative. And then back to the left-hand side, let's swap these terms. Now from here, let's divide both sides by pi over four. On the right-hand side, we're gonna do a substitution. Pi over four is the original sum right up here. So we're gonna substitute in the place of the pi over four, that original sum, the one minus one third plus one fifth and so on. Now from here, let's give this one a common denominator with the one third and make it three over three. And three over three minus one over three is two over three. Now here comes another step. We're gonna add two fifths minus two sevenths plus two ninths minus two elevenths and so on. And then we're gonna subtract the exact same thing. 
it's totally okay for us to add these two things because they're gonna cancel each other out forever. All these added together is gonna to give us zero. So we're basically just adding zero to this denominator. Let's bring the positive two thirds down here. And then let's focus on these. One fifth plus two fifths is three fifths and negative one seventh minus two sevenths is negative three sevenths. And that pattern is gonna continue forever. We're gonna have a bunch of threes in the numerator. Let's factor out those threes. Since we have threes going on forever, if we pull out a three, we're gonna have ones going on forever again. And down here, we have twos going on forever, so we can factor out a two, which will give us a bunch of ones on top. And now from here, we're gonna divide the top and the bottom of this fraction by this sum. So we're gonna divide by the one third minus one fifth plus one seventh and so on. On top, these match, so they're gonna cancel each other out, leaving us with one. And down here, these also cancel each other out. And now we can clean up the denominator. You can see we have the two right here. We're starting to form our continuous fraction. Here it is again. It's just got a bunch of twos down it. Next, we want to get a one right here. So let's multiply top and bottom of this fraction by three. Let's distribute this three to all these terms and let's change the three over three into a one. And then let's change the one into a five over five. So we can do five over five minus three over five, which is two over five. And on top, this three times this three will give us three squared. And now let's smush everything together. So we're gonna to add two sevenths and subtract two sevenths, then we're gonna subtract two ninths and add two ninths, and that's gonna go on forever. Let's bring down the two fifths, and let's combine these two top sums. Three sevenths plus two sevenths is five sevenths, and that's gonna continue forever. We're gonna have negative five ninths plus five elevenths and so on. So since all the terms are gonna have a five on top, let's factor out a five. And now all the terms will have ones on top. And then down here, since all the terms have twos on top, let's factor out a two and now they're gonna have ones all on top. And let's give ourselves some room because we're gonna divide both the top and the bottom of this fraction by this sum right here. On top, since we're doing this sum divided by the same sum, they're gonna cancel each other out, giving us one. And same thing down here, this sum is gonna equal this sum, so they're gonna cancel each other out. And now we can smush everything together. I wanna make this one fifth a one, so let's multiply top and bottom of this fraction by five. And then let's distribute this five to all of these terms. The five over five can change into one. And then I wanna subtract this five over seven, so let's change it into a seven over seven. Seven over seven minus five over seven is two over seven. And then on top, this five can multiply by this five to give us five squared. And this three squared can multiply by this one to give us the three squared up there. Those are the steps to build out this continuous fraction. And we can keep going and we'll end up with this and it'll keep going forever. So now we know how to get this continuous fraction, but we gotta get pi alone on this side. Let's change this single fraction into two fractions with a common denominator. And this term, pi over four divided by pi over four, that's equal to one. And then let's add one to both sides. On the left-hand side, the negative one and the positive one will cancel each other out. And then on the right-hand side, this becomes one plus the continuous fraction. Now let's put everything on this right-hand side over one. So we haven't changed anything, we're just dividing by one. And then from here, let's take the reciprocal of both sides. This pi over four is gonna go on top and the one will go on bottom. And this one will go on top and this continuous fraction will go on bottom. And then pi over four divided by one is just pi over four. And for the last step, we can multiply both sides by four. On the left-hand side, these fours will cancel each other out. So we have pi all by itself. And on the right-hand side, one times four is equal to four. And here's our continuous fraction that's equal to pi. How exciting.